other news. Thanks, Gary. Here's a look at some headlines from the ethnic and community media. The mostly Korean wholesale businesses along Broadway in Manhattan are being displaced by Chinese retailers that can offer cheaper prices. The Korea Times reports that only 30 percent of wholesale shops selling items like jewelry and wigs are Korean. The paper explains that Chinese stores are able to offer cheaper prices because they have their own factories back home. Voices of New York reports that there has been a dramatic growth of the Bhutanese community in New York. The site profiles a native from the South Asian country who arrived in New York in 1999 as a political refugee. Back then, he could hardly find other compatriots here. However, by 2009, about 23,000 Bhutanese had relocated to the U.S. They were part of the first wave of immigrants coming from Bhutan as part of the U.N. Multinational Agreement relocation. Bhutan is a landlocked state located between India and China. El Diario La Prensa highlights a Jewish lawyer who's drawn the ire of the Hasidic community as he fights for the housing rights of some low-income Latinos and African-American residents of North Brooklyn. Martin Needleman's latest battle is against the housing development called Broadway Triangle. Needleman says the development is promoting racial segregation because many apartments were allocated to white families. A court also found that many units were reserved for the Hasidic Jew community. From the Amsterdam News, a recent study suggests that black and Latino students are attending increasingly racially segregated schools around the country despite the decline in residential segregation. The report released by the Civil Rights Project at UCLA says that 15 percent of black students and 14 percent of Latino students attend apartheid schools. The study finds that students face double segregation by both race and poverty. New York, Illinois, and Michigan are at the top of the list of the most segregated states for these two groups. And finally, the Jewish Forward highlights the success of the Michigan Jewish Institute. In less than 10 years, the college has expanded from a small campus to an online institution thanks in part to $25 million in federal Pell Grants designated for low-income students. As a result, enrollment has risen from 300 to 2,000, and students are now able to take classes overseas, including Israel. However, the paper notes that success has come despite the poor performance of national proficiency exams and the problem of a student retention. Those were just a few headlines from the ethnic and community media. Back to Gary and Vianora. Thanks, Marlene.